Oh, good morning, viewers. Took a bit of appropriate clothing for unplugging your power. Anyway, we had to sleep in this morning because we didn't get off that car fishing boat till about oh, 4 30. We got back and then we accidentally ate too many waffles and a bit of bacon. But anyway, right now we're off to Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. It's kind of like the Gold Coast for Tennessee. It's up in the Smoky Mountains. It's where you'll find all the amusement parks, including the world famous Dollywood. That's right. Ring your mates, we're hitting the road again. We're leaving Nashville and we're making our way into the Smoky Mountains. Let's go. Two crazy guys. Don't look now, but they're right there. Sold everything and came over here to the States with their camera and a microphone. Outstanding! Well, it's Wednesday, and you know what that means. Free Waffle Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Well, we just decided to pull over and have breakfast and check it out. We're at the Huddle House. We're in Baxter, Tennessee. We're on... No, yeah, we will... We'll, we'll, yeah, we're just having breakfast. Chill out, Siri. And uh, check it out for $6.95. Bottomless coffee, hash browns, two eggs, chicken fried steak, biscuits and gravy, coffee. And this thing here, chicken fried steak, it's basically a steak that's been cooked on the grill and then they Kentucky fry it and put white gravy on it. And the white gravy is basically sausage fat, flour and milk. Well, all this for breakfast and a heart attack for lunch. If there's one thing that Americans do well, and that's customer service and large portions. Breakfast comes in five plates, plus every time you have a sip of coffee, they're back over reloading it. And why do they do this? Minimum wage over there is something like $7.50, but waitresses get $2 an hour and live on tips. So leave the girls a tip. It's how they survive. On the other hand, talking about surviving, I happened to look out the window. And camera three was absolutely struggling. That was a lot of food. viewers after that massive breakfast we're on our way to Gatlinburg but we saw the sign saying man's toys so we had to pull over and here we are at the outdoor junction a massive shop they've also got a firing range in here they've got everything and I gotta tell you my heart might belong to the south but after that breakfast I think my arteries they belong to Australia I'm looking forward to a salad but you can't make friends with salad but you can with Hutton gear so let's go inside Greg Jr., welcome to Blokes World. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Now, we were just talking off camera before. Big hunting area, this, huh? Yeah, right now, hunting seasons have opened up. We've just had bow season. In the next couple of weeks, I believe muzzleloader season will start up. And then in November, uh, the actual rifle season will start up. And then deer, small pests like coyotes, they're ramping around here, so farmers have a big problem with them. The story goes that they introduced them years ago to help with uh, roadkill problems, smaller animals, skunks, and things like that. Can we look just down here? Mm -hmm. Is, it, what's, is this a, like a remake of an AK-47? Yes, sir. These are an American model of the AK-47. Now, if, if the boss said to you, right, oh, Greg, you're allowed to take any one of these home, which would be the one you'd take home? I would take one of these Savage Axis XPs, a good bolt-action rifle. For what you get in this package, you're going to get a scope along with the gun for a very good price. The special thing about these XPs 
is that they have something called the AccuTrigger system. It's an adjustable trigger system where you can have a gunsmith go in there and adjust it for your length of pull however you want it. Mm -hmm. Also, it has something called an AccuStock, which is a floating stock, helps to keep this barrel off of the stock and helps to keep the accuracy up, keeps the barrel cold, and keeps things shooting smooth. So, Greg Jr., we've come downstairs. So, Greg Jr., we've come downstairs, and this is great, isn't it? Because a pistol is something that if you're going to buy, this is a really good way to come down and try before you buy. Yes, sir. We try to keep a good range of the calibers and pistols that a lot of people buy for protection. So we have them come down here and try them out before they buy them. Excellent. And you told us to go pick out any target we wanted. So we're going for the brain tease. Well, what a fantastic support band that was. I guess the main axon now, eh? The 1911. Yep, it is a uh, 45 automatic Colt pistol. That's what the ACP stands for. It is a design that's been around since 1911, over 100 years. It's one of the biggest, heaviest calibers that we've got. Awesome. All right, you ready for this chemistry? <laughs> Greg Jr., thanks so much, mate. That was absolutely fantastic fun, eh? No problem at all, sir. Oh, mate, fantastic. And check it out. There she is there, the zombie killer. There's a lot of big talk going on. Who did the shots? There you go. I got her done, didn't I? Mm hmm Got her done. Fine by me. All right, awesome. Let's hit it. Oh, mate, how much fun was that, eh? Awesome. I got thanks for my service. Got to fire a 1911 again. Isn't it good to be in a country where they make eye contact with you when they talk? Yeah. So found out Adam was in the Royal Australian Air Force. And the staff basically all came up and shook your hand, thank you for your service, and it was sincere. It wasn't like a McDonald's routine, this is what we say when people come in. Exactly, yep. All right, mate, well, we better run. We're running late. G'day, viewers. Hope you're enjoying the show. Well, it was time for breakfast. And when you think about breakfast in America, you think about 10 kilos of meat. So that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, let's get ourselves some breakfast. Great news, viewers. We tracked down the manager. Paul, welcome to Blokes World. Thanks for having us. Now, look, we were driving down the road and we stopped because we could smell your smoker at the front. What a great bit of advertising that is, eh? Because if you drive past with the windows down, you have to pull in here, huh? Yeah, the smell, it catches everybody. Mate, it's absolutely fantastic. And if there's one thing that you guys absolutely do fantastically here, besides moonshine, is barbecue. You really take it seriously from your rubs to your choice of cuts. Can you explain to us a bit about brisket? Well, brisket is... If you're looking at a cow, now the brisket is the lean piece of meat right above that piece of shank. It's basically the thigh of the cow. After it's cooked, it's kind of got like a texture of a, like a pot roast. It's personally my second favorite meat that we have here. Oh, excellent. What, what, what would be your favorite? The ribs. Oh, ribs. the ribs are good. <laughs> yeah, no, we've been told all the way back from Nashville that we have to stop here because your ribs are award-winning ribs. And I've noticed that you've got a plate in there that's got all four different types of meat. Yeah, it's called a combo four. All right, we got uh, some pork butts um, over here. Then we got some beef brisket over on this side. Then we got chicken, sausage, and ribs. The pork and the beef, you know, everything goes on about 10, 10.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, now, the pork and the beef, they'll stay uncovered like this until about 4, 4.30 or so. Then we'll take it off, we'll wrap it up in aluminum foil. Um, then we'll throw it back on here and cook it until about 10, 11 o'clock at night. So it gets a good, you know, 11, 12 hour cook on the pork and the brisket. All right, that sounds like us. Does that sound like you, camera three? Awesome, let's head inside. Paul, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to this. I see you every day. Well, it was, in fact, probably the best meal of the trip. Check out that meat. Anyway, after that, we drove just up the road to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's a bit of a touristy place, probably good if you're with the missus or your kids or whatever, but this is Bloke's World, so it didn't hang around. On the way out of town, though, we saw the mountain coaster, and it was on. G'day viewers and welcome to Gatlinburg. We're on our way up. We're on the sled roller coaster. Where you're in charge of the fun. Got my brakes. This is gonna be so sick. It's called the Gatlinburg Mountain Coaster and I'm here with the manager, Anthony. Welcome to Blokes World. Hey, how are you doing? Mate, really well. Now we just went for a quick run. You lift, you lose. It's on. What a sensational it a ride. Great, oh. It's a fantastic ride, isn't it? Oh, man. The check around. Woo! I've got to go again because there was a section there. I've got to admit, I gave her a bit of a squeeze on the brakes. Uh -huh. 
and I am You just... lost your man card there, Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I know, I know. That's it, no more. <laughs> All right, building up speed now. But I must be giving back a man card because I've actually admitted to slowing down. I'm actually devastated, so I'm okay. going back up again. Right. I'll let you go, go back on again. That's not a problem. Just remember that the cart will not come off the track. Yep. Oh, building up speed now. You have the outer rails, which the wheels are, are held onto, and then you have the inner rails that there's an undercarriage that actually holds it up mm -hmm. so that if you feel like you're tipping and you start to tip, the undercarriage grabs it and, and makes sure that you don't fall off. Yeah. Basically. Right now, uh, this is off season, so we close at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, Fridays and Saturdays, we close at 10. Mm -hmm. uh, but during the summertime, we stay open till like one, two o'clock in the morning sometimes. We have a long line of people that still want to ride. It's like a VI jet boat. This isn't quite jet boats. Sick. This is a must do. And so much of a bus do. We're going to have another run now. We're going to go check out Dollywood, and then we're going to come back and do this at night time to experience it at night. This is absolutely wicked! Oh, my God. That's the most fun you can have with your pants on. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, I just like it. It doesn't go long enough. <laughs> Well, guess what, viewers? We made our way to Pigeon's Forge, and there's one thing on the map that we had to drop in and see, and guess what? No surprise, we're at Dollywood. Where's the PR manager? Welcome to Blokes World, champion. Hey, thanks for coming. Oh, mate, this is like the mecca for our wives. They said, don't you dare go to America without going to Dollywood and getting us a T-shirt. We're in a quiet season now here in Gatlinburg, aren't we? It's just about to kick in with the snow season. Yeah, we're about to start our Christmas uh, festival here at Dollywood, uh, but throughout, we're always trying to do things for our guests, add something new every single year. Uh, in 2016, we added Lightning Rod, which is the world's fastest wooden coaster. It's also the uh, world's first wooden launched coaster, mm -hmm. as well as a new coaster whistle punk chaser for some of our younger uh, guests. If you enjoy rides, we have eight of the best roller coasters that you'll find. But if you don't like coasters, we've got a, literally the best entertainment of any theme park in the world. Now let's talk about yourself. You're, you're obviously a busy man. You're the PR manager here. <laughs> yes. But we were talking off camera before. You used to be involved in NASCAR. Right? I actually worked at Bristol Motor Speedway as the PR manager there. So uh, did a lot with uh, the events that we had there and at Bristol Dragway. Well, when we're back at home and we're watching NASCAR, we really don't get to see the actual gradient of the corners. Yeah. Like at Talladega, those bank walls. It's quite an experience. If you get a chance uh, to stop in Bristol, you definitely need to take the tour because you get to walk on those bank walk on the banking and it is quite an experience oh man it's so exciting and after this obviously we're going to heading up north we're going up to martinsville yes. to watch the next round yes. what can we expect from it martinsville well short track just it's a lot like bristol in that it's a short track but it's completely different you're going to see them you're going to see tempers i can guarantee that yep guarantee that they'll be running into each other and throwing some helmets probably oh, what's going to be going back to the old good old dale e days a bump bump into the wall exactly i, I guarantee it. you know martinsville is the oldest track on the the circuit so i think you will have a, a good time there. Well, we were doing all this research all about Martinsville, and the one thing that was doing my head in, and they talk about all the time, is the Martinsville hot dogs. Yes, the Martinsville hot dog. Yeah, you need to try one. Oh, man, do you know how hard it is watching NASCAR at 3 o'clock in the morning at your house watching you people a go, hot dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. wanting a hot dog? Yeah. Well, while you're there, you definitely need to try that. Uh, you know, it's part of the experience. When you go to Martinsville, you have to have one. Cool. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> You sure you don't want to come with us? You're better than our GPS unit. It, it sounds like a lot of fun, but I better stay here and take care of what we got going on here. Man, I don't want to get you in trouble with Dolly. <laughs> Wes, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, I appreciate it. Awesome. Now, do yourself a favor. If you're coming to the South, once we've, we've said it a million times, Southern hospitality, we now understand what it's about. It's about getting a big smile put on your face, eating a pound of barbecue, and maybe doing a little bit of moonshine, and then coming here and giving thanks to the great woman, Dolly Parton. All right, guys, by purchasing your ticket, you are responsible for all risk and liabilities. If you lose anything, including yourself, if you come flying out, we're not allowed to look for you or anything else tonight, okay? If you do see any bear, deer, or turkey, let us know when you get down here and we're gonna go hunting for it, okay? We do have bears at the top, they are hungry, okay? Oh, yeah. Whole new experience in the dark, I'm telling you. Two key differences uh, since this afternoon. Number one, it's night time, and I can tell you, with all these trees around, it is pitch black where there's no lights. Second difference, bears. They spotted bears here this afternoon. If I fall out, they're not allowed to come looking for me. Kind of adds to the adrenaline a bit. Gallenberg Mountain Coaster. At this time, hold on to both handles and push forward. Maintain a safe distance between you and the front in front of you. Woo! Just glad they don't have drugs.
drop bears in this country. Shake and bake. It's a whole new thing in the dark, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Completely different. Don't you go anywhere, because after the commercial break, it's time that we all dress up like cowboys. OK, viewers, it's middle of the night. We're in Pigeon Forge, and what do you do? You do a photo shoot. We're here with Ange. Ange, you've dressed us up like champions. I'm having yes. so much fun. Oh, I'm having fun with you guys. These are the best guys. All right, so we've been cowboys, and now we're going to go all south. Yep, here we go. Well, guess what, viewers? We're just ticking off those things off the bucket list. And one of the big things that we want to tick off is to come out and check out the Bristol Speedway. And we're here right now with Ben Trout. Welcome to the show, champ. Hey, welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. Glad to have you here. Oh, mate. I don't know if you can see my skin, but I've got goosebumps. This has been like... I feel like I'm standing on hallowed ground. This is fantastic, huh? Yeah, you are. I mean, this place opened in 1961. And um, a lot of times, if you ask drivers, if you ask fans, when it comes to NASCAR racing, where is the one place that you've got to go to see a race? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna tell you Bristol Motor Speedway. And, and uh, we're proud of this place, a tight half mile oval that always provides close competition and great racing and entertainment for the fans. One thing I always like to do, is want to take somebody, you know, you don't realize when you watch yeah. you know, this yeah. place on television, it's incredible. you know, the, the steepness of the bank, which, you know, gets somewhere close to 30 degrees up here at the top. Yeah, you know, we have progressive banking here. It starts at about 24 degrees at the bottom, gets to around 30 degrees at the top. By the time a car gets to the end of one of the straights here, um, you know, you're looking at the car doing 135 miles an hour. Then, of course, it'll slow down as it goes through the turns. But uh, they turn 15-second laps here during racing competition. You put 39 cars or 40 cars out here doing that. Um, it, it is, uh, it, it's quite hectic here at Bristol Motor Speedway for sure. Awesome, man. It's just not motorsports you do here. I'm wearing the right hat, hey? University of Tennessee played the uh, Virginia Tech here. They sure did. We hosted the world's largest college football game uh, in history. We had just a, a shade over 156,000 people here. These stands were full and uh, fans got to see the University of Tennessee win mm -hmm. over Virginia Tech University. And it's great because uh, the University of Tennessee is about 115 miles south of here. Virginia Tech is about the same distance north of here. Bristol is a city that sits on the state line of Virginia and Tennessee. We were the perfect place to host those two schools and uh, set a Guinness World Record for the largest attended football game ever. But when this place is full and the stands are full and the, um, the NASCAR transporters and haulers are in the infield, pit road is busy. You know, here we don't have a designated garage area. Pit road becomes the garage area here during a race weekend. Uh, it's, it's electric. Wow, so NASCAR, football, and then right behind us there, you got a drag strip? The drag strip is located just outside of the track. It's Bristol Dragway, better known here as Thunder Valley. Uh, we'll take you back there and we'll get a look at that too. A gentleman from Australia wanted to come to Bristol and started, he got, in, he got onto our message board on our website. And he was like, I want to come to Bristol, but I, it wasn't so much that he couldn't afford it. It was just, he, he was worried about staying and he wanted to camp. So he got hooked up on our message board and, and um, made contact with some fans. Well, that group of fans invited him over. He got his race tickets and everything bought him camping equipment and and set him up a campsite just across the street over here. I've seen this on television so many times. Yes, definitely. Thunder Valley, uh, Bristol Dragway, built in uh, 1965 and uh, certainly one of the uh, best drag strips in the country. 330 mile per hour runs when the NHRA visits in June. 
and 70 events a year. I mean, it's very busy here from March through October. Uh, all types of hot rods come through here. And what a fantastic runoff area as you just heading off into the wilderness, eh? The track got its nickname Thunder Valley because it literally sits between two mountainsides. So uh, carved right up through here. And uh, when when two 10,000 horsepower cars run through here, it literally does thunder. Oh, some hot rods, NASCAR, top blokes, camping, oh, and the home of motorsport, Bristol. Hey, make sure you're watching next week's episode of Blokes World because we finally make our way to Martinsville, Virginia for another round of NASCAR and trucks. Till then, be nice to one another. I'll see you next week.